At one time, the Institute was really like the voice of um, early childhood. And people would um, you know, come to Gazelle Institute for um, expert information. We had a syndicated column that um, ran in newspapers across the country. Um, we were on the Phil Donahue show. We, you know, we were all over the place and people knew Gazelle Institute. Gazelle is still applicable today. It's always, as long as there are children, you need to look at Gazelle. Gazelle Institute of Human Development has been associated with understanding how children grow and learn since 1950. The Institute's namesake, Arnold Gazelle, began his groundbreaking work in the study and research of early childhood development shortly after the 20th century. Dr. Gazelle was deemed the nation's first school psychologist, and he was also a founding member of the National Association for Nursing and Education, which is now known as the National Association for the Education of Young Children or NAEYC. In 1911, Arnold Gazelle founded a clinic in New Haven, Connecticut that is now known today as the Yale Child Study Center. His pioneering research involved revolutionary cinemagraphic technologies to document the developmental stage of children in terms of their verbal, motor, social, emotional, and cognitive growth. His work was so impeccable and so far and wide in interest that many different professions find a place in it. They understand it. His um, name may not be as well known in America as it is in other countries now, but his work, people don't even realize that they are using gazelle theory in their work. And he would be so happy. That was his purpose, not that his name be famous, but his work be appreciated. Arnold Gazelle went on to develop a set of norms illustrating sequential and predictable patterns of growth and development, which became the foundations for the Gazelle Developmental Observation, an observational assessment tool used to measure and document development. His research and observations began to prove that children who were failing in elementary school were not fundamentally ready to start school in the first place. This data proves that one's chronological age does not necessarily coincide with their developmental age. One of the most dramatic things in our world today is uh, the copy forms because a child can draw a circle, uh, copy, look at a circle and copy it. When they're three, when they're four, they can do a square. It's not until they're five that they can do the triangle. And when you see children trying to do triangles and developmentally they're at four, they can get one and maybe line and maybe the other line, but the other line, oh, and it's consistent. That's the thing that's amazing to me, that it's consistent. Well, there were a few that would say, Whoosh, when you're done. The five-year-old's going to say, what's next? Because they're ready to learn, they're anxious to get on with it. But for some, you have to work sometimes under the table in order to get answers to come out because they're still looking at this as playtime and a game. And I've given parts of the gazelle assessment under the table and almost playing the games. But if you can get most of the answers, or sometimes you might have to come back next year and try again, not quite that. Um, but it's too stressful. And even with this assessment, which does have the fun parts and what you can do and the action parts, which children love. They want to jump even further the next time. And okay, that's long enough. The end of the gym's way over there. It's time to come back. Um, you have to let them explore and have the bit of fun too. And if they couldn't do any of it, they might not be ready. Two of Arnold's former students, Dr. Francis Ilge and Dr. Louise Bates Ames, decided to carry on Gazelle's philosophies and practices after his retirement from Yale in 1950. They wanted to open a research institute in conjunction with a nursery school that would continue to explore child development through one's adolescence. With great monetary assistance from Dr. Ilge, they created the Gazelle Institute for Child Development, 
where Dr. Gazelle served as a research consultant until his death in 1961. Another interesting thing about my mother is that uh, she, she proudly told me that when she was, I think, five, she told her mother, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. I, I'm not sh quite sure what it's called, but it's something like a disciple. At the Institute, every child was given a developmental examination where teachers and parents were expected to watch so that they could learn the specific needs of their child. When Bonnie Welch from the nursery school class of 1969 was asked about her fond memories of the Institute, she said, Going downstairs where they asked us questions and played games with us, where I saw the screen behind which my parents could sit to observe us. There was a balance of group and individual activities to witness and examine. Free play included block building, water play, puzzles, painting, and sculpting with clay. Janet Leonard, who was once the director of the nursery school, agreed with Gazelle's rudimentary principle that children were most apt to thrive when parents and teachers communicated well with each other. We plan each day's activities to make use of a wide variety of materials and spaces to encourage curiosity, resourcefulness, growth, and pleasure. We encourage children to participate in those activities which are satisfying to them and help them develop new interests. But no two children grow up in exactly the same way, so we recognize and encourage these individual differences. Anne Brownstein, also from the class of 1969, has fond memories of the Gazelle Nursery School. Gazelle was my initiation into living in an enchanted space. Upon opening the heavy wooden front door, you were immediately greeted by a warm, familiar smell, similar to the sidewalk dust after a fresh rain. Gazelle was a very wooden house, the walls, floors, the cabinets, and some of the furniture. The woodwork had been painted several times, evidence of the different lives the house had lived. In short, Gazelle is where I first experienced the magic and mysteries of inhabiting an antique space, a love that has remained with me throughout my life. It was a really magical place. I, it was in this old building um, uh, and it was on all three floors. There was a ground floor where we had um, uh, a program for two-year-olds and their parents. It was kind of a parent-child uh, group. And then on the first floor of this, you know, it's basically a mansion, uh, there was the three-year-olds. And we had about 21 children and it was, uh, there was a kitchen, and that's where we would do all the messy activities, the art and the sand. And then there was what we called the small room, which kind of had a lot of the small manipulative things. And then there was the, the big room. And the big room was uh, where there was the blocks and the dramatic play and that kind of thing. The Institute during the 1950s, 60s, and 70s was thriving and was sought out for its research in vision and speech development. Multiple clinic services and practices evolved to help children of all ages, even teenagers. Because the Institute was now working with a variety of ages, its name was changed in 1982 to the Gazelle Institute of Human Development. Towards the beginning of the 1980s, despite its successes, the nursery school was unable to sustain itself and later closed at the end of its 29th year in June of 1980. Dr. Ilge died the following year the age of 81. One of Dr. Ilda's most important legacies was the formation of the National Lecture Staff. This network grew out of Dr. Ilda's work with Gazelle-trained educators across the country. Women and men who embraced Dr. Gazelle's approach to child development prepare and conduct workshops for teachers, parents, and school administrators to introduce them to the Gazelle Developmental Assessment and to show them how to use and administer it properly. To assist her in developing curriculum guidelines, Dr. Ilge hired Jackie Haynes in 1969, who later became a director of the Institute. And she also trained Dr. Norman Heimgardner to be a National Lecture Staff member. Norman has conducted countless workshops and taught the Gazelle philosophy at universities in the West and throughout Thailand and China. The appointment of Elise Waterhouse as director of the Institute in 2002 cleared the way for major reshaping of the organization. Its board of directors and staff, policies and procedures were re-examined, rewritten, and clarified. In November 2007, the Institute's board of directors hired Dr. Marcy Gademi, 
a nationally known child development advocate who has expertise and considerable experience in educational assessment and publishing, as well as earning a PhD in child development and an MBA. She immediately amended the hardships of the Institute undertook throughout the 80s and 90s by reestablishing the credibility of Gazelle's name in the public eye by initiating the much needed national renorming study for the original Gazelle developmental observation. She created partnerships with other early childhood agencies in New Haven, such as the New Haven Early Childhood Council, and connected with New Haven Public Schools to introduce them to the Institute's Parent Teacher Connection Program. And Dr. Gademi created a new marketing strategy and branding image to further solidify Gazelle's philosophies and practices within early childhood development research throughout the coming decades of the new millennium. At one time, the Institute was more of a clinic. Now we're definitely more child advocacy. Today, Gazelle Institute is focused on educating and supporting teachers and parents in order to ensure the future success of all children in the United States and abroad. The Institute's mission is to educate, guide, and support parents, teachers, and school administrators in the understanding of child growth and development so that all children may be nurtured, encouraged, and empowered as they grow and learn. It is their vision that all children enjoy their childhood and that they have the time and opportunity to grow and to learn at their own pace and in their own way. In the fall of 2010, the Zell Institute of Human Development celebrated its 60th anniversary. On October 14, 2010, the mayor of New Haven formally proclaimed publicly that was Gazelle Institute Leadership and Discovery Day. Later that evening, the Institute hosted an honorary banquet for Dr. Edward Sidler, where New York Times bestselling author Ashley Merriman spoke about nurture stock, the new thinking about children. The following morning on October 15, 2010, Gazelle Institute conducted a national conference on early childhood leadership. The goal of the LEAD conference, which stands for Learn, Educate, Advocate, Do, was to raise awareness about the crisis that is happening in classrooms all across the country. Gazelle knows how young children learn from birth through age eight, yet policymakers and administrators are ignoring the facts and research. This conference provided leaders with the ideas on how to raise test scores the right way. Speakers included Dr. T. Barney Brazelton, Dr. Joshua Sparrow, Head Start founder Edward Ziegler, Alliance for Childhood Executive Director Joan Allman, Columbia University's Dr. Sharon Lynn Kagan, United States Representative the Honorable Rosa DeLauro, and Dr. Jacqueline Jones, Senior Advisor to the Secretary for Early Learning from the Department of Education in Washington, D.C. Currently, the Institute is rededicating itself to the pioneering work of its namesake, Dr. Arnold Gazelle, who once said, the measure of a society is its reverence for children.